Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to outline a guide to achieving 12 or 24 challenges in the 3.16 Scourge League. Uh, I'll just start by saying this is easier than usual. Uh, 12 challenges is very easy this league. Uh, normally 12 challenges is something that you hit about level 90 on a character and usually takes a little bit of going out of your way. Uh, this league you'll probably hit it before 85 even without going out of your way. 24 takes a little bit of going out of your way, but is probably about as difficult as achieving 16 challenges in most past leagues. Uh, most characters will be able to do it by about level 92. 36 will take you about uh, 500 maps or 10 Cirrus cycles in order to do, and will require a fair bit of messing around in alternate content that you may otherwise have not done. So for instance, you'll need to delve to depth 250, uh, which is something that most people won't do unless they choose to specialise in delve. It's also the easiest league to get 40 challenges in since the Blight League, but this is still not trivial, and it's still going to take a lot of play. So that's the intro, but let's talk about the format quickly. Normally I would do guides to 12, 24 as separate guides, and then 36 as another guide, uh, but this time I am combining 12 and 24 into one guide. Uh, that's because of the lower difficulty than usual. This video will cover the 27 challenges that I feel are most likely to form a part of your pathway to 24. The second video will cover the other 13 challenges, the ones you'll probably want to leave unless you're chasing 36 or 40 challenges. Of course though, if your goal is 24, you are free to do the harder ones. I just don't recommend it. Uh, you might, for instance, get transform items 2 through luck, like I did. And so if that happens, fantastic, you can skip another one of these challenges on your path to 24. Or alternately, who knows, maybe you'll decide to go for 36 instead. Uh, so let's start with the 9 you will do by the time you beat Act 10. Firstly, we have Glimpse and Alternate Reality. Uh, this is basically just requiring you to do one Scourge encounter, nothing more. Uh, Gear Up 1 is a tutorial. Uh, most builds will equip these items, speed boots, uh, speed boots, rare weapon, and a one resist ring in Act 1. And they'll continue to drop all game in case you use something else early. So for instance, you might decide never to use a Sapphire ring, especially if you're an experienced player. You might just go straight to a Coral ring in Act 1, and then later in the game uh, use two Stone rings instead. But Sapphire rings drop all throughout the game, and so you can easily find one and equip it. Next is Craft Items 1. This requires you to use the most current, uh, common currency orbs in the game. So this is a Chromatic Orb, Alteration Orb, Transmutation Orb, and an Augmentation Orb. You will definitely get this through natural gameplay, probably well before completing Act 5. And these are the most cur common currency items in the entire game, uh, other than Wisdom Scrolls, Portal Scrolls, Armourers, Scraps, and Blacksmith Whetstones. Uh, do save your first transmutes though, don't use them on items, uh, use them for, for purchasing skill gems. This also applies to alteration orbs, uh, and also prioritise using the crafting bench, Helena's crafting bench, over some of these things early on, uh, because it will give you more of a boost in power than using these currency orbs will. Ultimately, the first time that you decide, I am going to sort out my flasks, uh, you will get the alteration transmute and augment automatically, and Chromatic Orbs will be something that you will definitely use at some point just because you can't play the game without the right sockets without the right sockets on your items. Act Bosses 1 and 2 are just Gatekeeper encounters. You've got to kill Katava in Act 5, you've got to kill Katava in Act 10, and you've got to kill everything in between as well. Uh, so this is just a little progress meter through the core storyline, something that's there to give newer players a little bit of a sense of... a little bit of a sense of just how much scope there is to the game before they get to maps. Uh, next is Awaken the Blood Crucible. This requires specking 20 points in the Blood Cru Crucible's level up tree, and this is something that I personally got in Act 7. I think most players will use the Scourge mechanic a little bit less than I did while leveling, uh, but even then, even if you're really casually using it, you'll have this by Act 10. Uh, it's also really useful for purposes of helping you get gear up too. So Gear Up 2 requires you to equip a 5-link item, and 5-link items are much easier to get through the Scourge mechanics, and specifically a, an upgrade point called Stitched Wounds, than they are through any other source in the game early on, uh, so that will really help you. Uh, yeah, there's a sort of synergy between Awaken the Blood Crucible and Gear Up 2 there. Uh, if you do skip over the Scourge mechanic while you're levelling, uh, this will be even faster when you're in maps. For Craft Items 2, uh, you need to use a Chaos Orb, a Glass Blower's Bauble, a crafting bench uh, in your hideout, a jeweler's orb, and a fusing orb. Uh, so jeweler's orbs and fusing orbs are reasonably common. Chaos orbs are a little bit less common, as are glass blowers baubles, but glass blowers baubles are something that you will just use on your own flasks. They're very cheap. And whilst chaos orbs are mostly used as the primary currency for 
low and medium value trades from player to player, uh, they are something that drop a lot. So you don't need to worry about wasting one of them. When people trade in them, they're generally not trading for small amounts of Chaos Orbs, uh, something that people will trade 50 of them at a time or 100 of them at a time or 200 of them at a time. And so you don't need to worry about just using one of them in order to get this challenge. Chaos Orbs, ironically, don't have that much utility in crafting. Uh, they're mostly used by in-game players, not so much for their effect of, of scrambling the mods on an item, but instead to augment their in-game maps uh, via purchasing additional upgrades to them from an NPC called Zana that you will meet uh, a little while after completing Act 10. Defeat Scourge Monsters is next, and this one happens really early without, in progression without even trying. Uh, I think I had this in Act 7 as well. Uh, even if you don't do Scourge much, you'll get this really quickly once you start trying to, to do Scourge a little bit for it. So next we'll do the ones that you do by accident, but you probably won't get by the time you finish Act 9. Oh, sorry, Act 10. Master the Passive Tree requires you to allocate 10 Mastery Nodes. Uh, most players, this will take about level 70 to be able to fit that many points on your tree. Uh, if you're playing some sort of unusual build that doesn't have the ability to do this, like you, you can always just unspec a bunch of points on your tree and spec into Masteries. I think this is going to be a pretty uncommon choice, and the people that are doing that will be playing very advanced builds, uh, such as, for instance, cluster jewel stacking setups uh, might struggle with this. But if you're in that situation, you know you know enough about the game to know how to get this done. Full clear a map. Uh, often you'll leave a map with 20 or fewer monsters remaining uh, and, you know, just not be not be worried about chasing down those last ones that are down some elk clove you forgot to explore. Uh, but not always. Run 20 maps and you will get this one by accident. Transform Items 1 is next. Uh, this requires you to use the Scourge device on all different base types uh, and take them up to Tier 3. You can't take an item to Tier 3 unless the item's item level is at least 68. And so start working on this once you're in maps and you will definitely have it in a short period of time. Golem bosses is next. Uh, all of these are low tier map bosses and so you'll be able to do this one really easily. You might have a bit of trouble getting one specific map to drop. If that happens to you, uh, what you want to do is use your Zana missions more. Zana missions will do two things. Firstly, Zana will give you a whole suite of maps to choose between uh, that you can then go and run. So you might find that there's six or eight different maps that she's offering you, and one of them might be the specific map you're looking for. But if it's not, don't worry. Uh, every time that you initiate a Zana mission in your hideout, Zana's shop of the maps that she is selling will reset. When this happens, have a look through the list of stuff she's selling, and she may just have the map that you're trying to chase down. Uh, next is Ascend and also hit level 90. These can be done in, these will, you know, some players will do one of these first, others will do the other one. Uh, but basically, these are huge power boosts for your character that you just kind of have to do. Uh, ascending it requires you to beat the Eternal Labyrinth, which is a reasonably difficult combat encounter, but something that our characters have progressed in power enough over the years that it's just sort of steadily gotten a bit easier each league as our characters have gotten stronger. Uh, if you're really struggling with Ascending, uh, get an experienced player to help carry you through the Labyrinth. Uh, there's a bunch of players that will do this for a modest in-game fee, like 10 Chaos Orbs or something like that. Uh, and the amount of power that you get from this will be absolutely staggering. You no longer need to flag for the Eternal Labyrinth as well, which is something that was changed in this league. For level 90, you might find yourself uh, dying a lot. Uh, if that happens, there's a couple of options you've got. You can either improve your character so that you're dying less, or uh, you'll generally find that each death that you suffer in yellow tier maps, like once you're around level 88 or so, will set you back about two maps. Uh, you can really stamp out these deaths by running scoured maps. So just uh, no mods on them at all. Hit them with an orb of scouring. Doesn't actually decrease the XP much compared to running a rare map. And it will just make them much, much, much safer. And then that can just get you over this milestone of level 90. You do generally want to use alchemy orbs on your maps. Uh, but there's no shame in just dropping back to scoured maps briefly in order to get over a milestone that you uh, otherwise aren't getting to. You can also go sideways in Nico's Delve Mines, or you can run Heist as another way to get a lot of XP. Uh, and all of these strategies will help you out in getting yourself to level 90. So that's level 50, uh, sorry, that's 15 of 24 challenges done already. Let's start talking about ones that require a little messing around. Map Boss Massacre is next. Uh, so this requires you to kill six map bosses in the space of 10 seconds. There's a number of ways to do this, and I'm just going to suggest the way that I think is by far the easiest. There is a map in tier 3 called Courtyard. Uh, Courtyard is quite good for this, uh, for this challenge because the map bosses are relatively easy. They only have 650,000 hit points and there are three of them. 
So that's only three. How are we going to get six? Well, we're going to get six by rolling the map using alteration orbs until it has only the twinned affix on it. Once you've got that, uh, you're in a really good place to go through the courtyard map, get to the final boss room, and then you've got 4 million hit points worth of bosses to kill within 10 seconds. I think a lot of builds can do this pretty easily, especially given that you can probably hit all six of them with most skills. Uh, there are other three map bosses you can choose, but there are two I want to advise against. The first one is Vile Temple, uh, which just cannot be twinned at all. The second one is Val Pyramid, where the bosses do a staggering amount of damage. Uh, this is a really dangerous map when it's twinned. Uh, in fact, I would say it's one of the hardest bosses on the entire Atlas at the moment. And those bosses really do scale a lot with map mods, but twinning them is very dangerous because they're so fast. Uh, next up is Work With Allies. Uh, these are not equal to each other. So this would have been in your first 12 challenges, except for the fact that one of them is a bit more effort than the others. Meeting Zana just simply means do one tier 3 map ever. When you kill the map boss of that tier 3 map, there will be a portal that appears, walk in it, and Zana will be on the other side. After a metamorph, you just need to do an average of 12 maps, and one will appear in a map, and then at that point you kill it, and that's done. To anoint, a uh, to anoint an item, all you need to do is meet Sister Cassia, complete one of her blight encounters, which are in about 1 in 12 maps, and then at that point, as long as you've got 3 oils, you're done. However, Reaching level 5 on a rogue takes a bit more. This is going to take you an average of about 12 to 15 contract encounters. Uh, so these are those contracts that drop for heist. And what I suggest you do for this, the easiest way is just to focus on one of the rogues. Now this assumes that you're not interested in focusing on heist for this league. You know, some, uh, some people will like to do a lot of heist, some people don't. Uh, if you're not looking to do much heist, uh, just focus on doing contracts that require lockpicking as their skill. Uh, you'll very quickly get cast to level 4 in lockpicking. And once he's level 4, you can do almost every lockpicking contract that drops in the game. And just run a few of them, and cast will be level 5, and that will be it for, for your requirements for doing heist for work with allies. So that should take you about 12 or 15 contracts, which, assuming you're not experienced with heist at all, will probably take you about an hour and a quarter or so. Gear up 3 is next, and it is another heist one. Uh, here, you're going to need an influenced item and a cluster jewel to equip to your character. This is really, really easy. Getting a cluster jewel that helps your character is not easy to do. Getting an influenced item that helps your character is not easy either. But getting just one or the other is really, really easy. To get a trinket, though, uh, you need to unlock the trinket slot, which requires you to complete a grand heist that has currency slash trinket rewards. And then in the final room, there will be an unlock for the trinket slot. This unlock can be shared with other players. And so one thing that people sometimes do is invite other people in to do this uh, in Trade League, uh, and that sort of lets them really cheese the requirements for themselves in Gear Up 3. Uh, additionally, you will then actually need to source a trinket, but chances are that the, uh, the Grand Heist that you're running here will, ha will have that trinket for you as well. So this one shouldn't take too much effort, uh, Gear Up 3, uh, just a little bit of messing around with a past league mechanic. And now you're at 18. And next up is Conqueror in Style. So this is Defeat Conquerors in Style requires you to kill the four lesser Conquerors of the Atlas. So Baran, El Hesman, Drox, and Veritania. And to do them whilst dodging all of their one-shot mechanics. So for Baran, when he raises both of his hands, he is either casting Mana Runes or he is about to slam. In either case, don't stand in front of him, because if he's about to slam, then he's going to, uh, he's going to cause you to fail this challenge. Uh, so what you want to do with this is just basically duck around behind him whenever he, whenever he raises both hands, unless you're confident he's casting mana runes, uh, in which case you can go to, you can use whatever strategy you normally use to manage mana runes. I do have a guide to Baran, and my uh, my suggestion to you for mana runes is that you alternate. So the first mana runes he casts, you throw on the left hand, leftmost tile in the arena, then the second one is on the rightmost tile, and you just alternate between them. Uh, that's my suggestion for Baran, but you don't need to follow my advice. You can do it your own way. Lots of people build up um, build up experience doing the fight their own way, and that's fine too. For Veritania, again, I have a guide for, uh, for the boss fight. Uh, it almost requires you to have an instant teleport move skill. The other thing you want to do with Veritania is if you ever get cornered by her. So when Veritania gets a bit lower on health, the large tornado that you're fighting in the center of uh, will constrict the area of the of the atlas. Or, sorry, the area of the arena will constrict. 
when that starts to really get tight, uh, if, sometimes Veritania can sort of corner you in a spot where you can't get away from her tornadoes. If that happens, what you want to do is very, very, very quickly log out of the game and then re-enter. That will ensure that you don't get hit by one of those tornadoes. Um, the easiest way to do the Veritania one, because it is the hardest of the Conquering style uh, encounters, is to do it the very first time you fight Veritania when she's just like a low tier boss. Uh, but if you don't do it the first time, you can't fight the Zero Watchstone version again. So you're going to have to fight her as Four Watchstone version, where she might have 30 million or more hit points. Uh, but it's still very doable, just requires a little bit of precision. Just have some sort of teleport move skill and you'll be fine with this. Maybe not on your first attempt. El Hesman, whenever he taunts you verbally, zip behind him. Uh, all of his slam attacks hit a frontal area in front of him. Uh, sometimes it's like a uh, something like a frontal circle in front of him. Sometimes it is a cone in front of him. Uh, but all of them, you just want to zip behind him and they'll miss you. Uh, slice and Dice is just one of the slams, but you'll get to be missed by all of them pretty easily. Uh, for Drox, you want to dodge the big ultra slow fist that looks like it's going to one-shot you, because it probably is going to one-shot you. Uh, it's one of the hardest hits in the game, so you want to dodge that anyway, and if you die to it, or if you get hit by it, you'll probably die to it. If you die to it, you'll fail this challenge, but you can always try again. Uh, as I say, these are easiest on zero watchstone fights, but it's no big deal if you fail them on the zero watchstone because they're all very doable on the four watchstone versions. Cyrus is not needed for this challenge. That's 19 now. So next up we have Vendor Recipes, which is probably going to be about your 20th challenge. Uh, vendoring a Tabula Rasa or a bad six length that's not Tabula will give you a Divine Orb. Uh, so that's the Divine Orb recipe. For an Enkindling Orb, you need to Vendor 4 Instilling Orbs plus a gem with the trigger tag, such as Cast When Damage Taken or Cast On when uh, cast on Death, and one Scouring Orb. For a Regal Recipe, you need to Vendor one item that, for each of the main equipment slots on your character, uh, but all of the items need to be rare and item level 75 plus. So this means you need to Vendor two rare rings, one rare amulet, one rare belt, one rare torso piece, one rare helmet, one rare gloves, one rare boot, and then also something for each hand. This can either be just a bow, or it can be a two-handed uh, a, a two-handed weapon, or it can be a one-handed weapon plus a shield, or it can be two one-handed weapons. Uh, if the items that you vendor are all unidentified, you will receive an extra regal orb. If the items that you vendor that accept basic quality, so this is armorers, scraps, or blacksmith sweatstones. If they're all 20 quality, then you will receive an extra regal orb again. However, in practice, uh, you probably uh, just want to do this one once. Uh, if you do this with all the items being, uh, with sorry, with the minimum item level being in the range uh, 60 to 74, then you will receive chaos orbs instead of regal orbs. And if the minimum item level is between 1 and 59, you will receive a uh, you will receive chance orbs instead of chaos or regal orbs. Ring of Exile, you need to vendor a Ring of Expulsion. So this is a ring with the Tier 3 Chaos Resist suffix and an Amethyst Flask and an Orb of Augmentation. Uh, this flask can be a bad roll at Ceres Promise, and that's probably easier than putting Amethyst Flasks on your loot filter. For Unique Item, uh, vendoring three of the same Unique that are all uncorrupt and all have the same explicit mods, I don't necessarily need to have the same rolls, just not totally different versions of the same Unique will work. Or you can, vendor the, uh, you can use the Prophecy to vendor five unique items and get one unique item back. For a Wicked Weapon, uh, this is a weapon with one, spe one specific prefix, uh, which is percentage increased physical damage. Uh, you need to vendor a unique a Rustic Sash, such as uh, I think Prism Weave, and a Blacksmith Sweatstone and a weapon. For Expedition Encounters is next. This is mostly about the boss. Uh, doing a logbook, finding an underground area, these are pretty common and pretty easy but you're going to need to kill a boss. The easiest way to do this is just going to be to farm maps in the Lyra Arthane area in order to source yourself a lot of logbooks. Uh, max out runic monster markers in encounters and, and hit any 50% increased logbook drops remnants uh, unless you can't beat the remnant difficulty mod. Do this a lot, especially in Lyra Arthane with really powerful expedition passives and you will get yourself a lot of logbooks. Keep doing this and you will find one that has a boss in it. One more thing that needs to be said about expedition encounters in general is that they are really, really lucrative, uh, especially if you're pretty good with rogs crafting. You can make a lot of items that just have a lot of high tier mods on them. 
that might be exactly some perfect combination for someone's build. So it's well worth trying this if you're in a trade league uh, and you know, you, you'll get the boss eventually as a bonus, but all of the expedition currency that you get along the way will really help with your progress. Additionally, logbooks can spawn with a rare implicit, uh, contains such and such a boss. Uh, in trade, if you get this, uh, you've got somewhat of a jackpot there, so be split at first and then sell one of the copies. Rog and Gwenon's logbooks can spawn bosses and anything monster level 68 and up. Tujin's requires 75 plus and Danig's requires 81 plus. Danig's boss, uh, which is Ulroth, is mean. Uh, Danig's boss is genuinely really quite difficult. Next up is Craft Items 4. Uh, you'll notice Craft Items 3 hasn't come up yet. Uh, that's because I think in some ways Craft Items 4 can be easier. Uh, so this requires using expensive crafting orbs. A divine orbs and annulment orbs are relatively cheap and you can sort of fritter these away, especially given you only need to waste one of them for this challenge. Uh, so just use one, get it out of the way. Sacred orbs are genuinely rare and have no divination cards. Uh, if you're in a trade league, definitely buy your sacred orb that you need for this challenge right now. Don't wait, they're just going to go up, 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 up as the league gets older uh, because they are going to get scarcer across the economy as people buy them for the purposes of getting this challenge done. Uh, it may well be that, that uh, Sacred Orbs end up as sort of 200 chaos or more late league as players panic to get this challenge done. So self-found players, you'll have to find one and there's no way to target farm it. It's just a rare drop anywhere thing. Uh, so it might take ages. The more monsters you kill, the more chance you've got of getting this. Uh, additionally, killing monsters in the Scourge Krangleverse has a tremendous loot multiplier. Uh, some information on some of the searching that I've done around that uh, in the description below. And so you'll find that that will help you a lot. Exalts are actually the most common of these currencies and the most easily target farmed with the exception of the Divine Orb. Uh, however, using one can feel pretty wasteful because Exalts have some very powerful alternate uses that are not just slamming an item for an extra mod. Uh, and using one to slam an item obviously locks you out of doing more powerful things like metamodding with them. So do this very late in the league when the cost will set you back less. Or exalt a 3 mod jewel that you're already using like I did. Early reports said that Leo's Bench worked as an alternative to using an Exalted Orb. This no longer seems to be true. However, uh, Tiny or Guff in the Syndicate can provide you with an alternate source of exalts for this challenge. Ones that can't be used on any other item are just on the item that you feed into Tiny's Trial. Uh, however, you might have already kicked him out of your syndicate, in which case I don't think it's worth your while bringing him back into the syndicate in order to do this. But if you can do a single, uh, if you can do a single syndicate encounter that's got guff in it, uh, then that will be something that will be quite useful for you in order to uh, get Tiny's Trial and then use Exalted Orbs that way. So Craft Items 3 is next. This is cheaper but more effort than Craft Items 4, and that's why I'm putting it later. It requires you to get a Syndicate Crafting Bench. You might have done this as part of your way of chasing down Craft Items 4, but if you haven't, it'll take you three to five Jun missions to acquire, and it comes from most members in a Research Safe House, uh, as well as from Guff in any Safe House, or a couple of other configurations. Uh, run five Safe Houses, you'll find a few benches, and that will get you there. You'll also need a Corrupt Essence, and these can be a little tricky to farm. Uh, so Misery, Envy, Dread, and Scorn Essences are purple. These are the ones that you can corrupt while, so while the essence is still attached to a monster and in the frozen state, I uh, hit it with a remnant of corruption. And if you're in Haywark Hamlet with spec into, and you are spec into essences, this will give you a one in three chance to upgrade it to one of the corrupt essences. Uh, if it's not in Haywark Hamlet, or if you haven't spec into the essence nodes in Haywark, it'll be a one in four chance to give you an upgraded, uh, to upgrade to a corrupt essence. Uh, if you're having trouble sourcing a corrupt essence, use sextants on your maps. Uh, when you're using sextants on watchstones and then running maps with them, there's a reasonably common effect that will add essences to a map, uh, and that will help you get this one. The harvest bench component and the resonator component are comparatively free. Uh, you get those very quickly, very easily, even without any trading, and without even necessarily... You only need to run one harvest encounter and one or two uh, delve nodes, and you'll get that done. For Embrace Corruption, uh, this would be quite a bit earlier, except for the fact that you're going to need to hit a level 21 gem and a 23 quality gem. So you just need to vial a lot of armor pieces, a lot of weapons, and a lot of jewels. Do that and you will get all of the uh, all of the other components without even thinking about it. But then you are going to need to apply vial orbs to level 20 gems for about a 1 in 8 chance to get a 21 uh, level 21 gem, and you will need to apply vial orbs to 20 quality gems 
in order to get about a one in eight chance of going up to 23 quality. So uh, what I would suggest you do here is just acquire a lot of 2020 gems uh, through leveling gems while you're you know while you're playing the game, and then just keep valing them. Uh, at some point you may you may find that you've got one but not the other. So you might find you've got uh, say 23 quality but you haven't yet hit 21 level 21. At that point, uh, just basically trade for level 20 gems and val them, and you'll have a modest chance of getting there. You'll be throwing away a bit of currency each time you try it, but eventually you'll get this without too much difficulty. If you're in solo self found, uh, add a level 20 gems back to your loot filter if it's not if they're not on there, and you will then find them in time with that. Also, Harvest can help you with this uh, by virtue of giving you more gem cutters prisms, uh, or also more gem XP from Faceted's lenses. Pantheon Powers is next. So this requires you to loot six divine vessels or to loot one of them and then use the divine vessel recipe, which is to vendor five flasks plus a divine orb. Uh, only do that vendor recipe in solo self found. It is definitely not worth it in a trade league. It's kind of a hassle, but it is well worth it as it improves your character. Uh, so you're just going to need to run six specific maps. And the first one will upgrade the Pantheon you have on most of the time. The second one can upgrade a second Pantheon you can swap to. If you've got multiple characters, uh, this actually plays really well. You can upgrade one Pantheon that you really care about on one character, fully upgrade it, get all three of them, then go to the other character and do three of them, uh, and do three different, or do th three upgrades for a different Pantheon, and you'll get credit that way. So the Watchstones is next. Now, this is a little bit mean in SSF, uh, and that's why it's number 26, because in trade, this is, this is pretty easy in trade. So... In Solo Cell Found, you need drops that are specifically from Cyrus or the Maven. If you can beat neither of those bosses, skip this one. I mean, technically, you can get eight copies of the Watchstone uh, of the Divination card, the Hook, uh, which is a Cortex drop with 100% drop rate, and that can also bypass it. But you just need to have a unique Watchstone from somewhere. So on average, it's going to take you 5.5 10-way invites to get all three types of craftable Watchstone. So that's something that you will get through normal progression. Yeah, you know, over time, and you can easily side. Uh, you can easily speed this up with trade. Add a couple of Cyrus or Maven runs, or eight Cortexes for the Div card for a unique Watchstone, and you are done. Lastly, is the Shaper Guardians. Now, I'm going to put links in the description of the video below to the guides that I've done for each of these four bosses. But you're going to need to fight four reasonably difficult bosses, and each of them you will need to have the hardest individual mod. Or maybe, maybe for Minotaur, it's the second hardest. You'll need to have one of the hardest individual mods that 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 that. Uh, encounter can roll are uh, applied to the map when you're running it. However, these can be done transmuted using alterations to isolate just the one mod you need. And they're among the worst individual mods for each guardian, but still should be, if you're doing them transmuted, it still should be easier than doing them rare with just a mixture of mods. So this is very doable, even if you're not a dedicated bosser, but it will take a bit of practice with all of the encounters. Uh, lastly, if you are having trouble getting one specific guardian to drop, don't worry, you can apply Horizon Orbs to a Shaper Guardian map and it will swap it to a different Shaper Guardian map. So if you've got a Maze of the Minotaur and what you need is a Pit of the Chimera, uh, applying a Horizon Orb to a Maze of the Minotaur has a reasonable chance of changing it into a Pit of the Chimera. That's all I got on this. That covers the first 27 challenges, so 24 of them that you'll need to do. May of Orbs have interesting results and I will return with the remaining 13 challenges in another video later.